Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I lost you there. Anyway, no edits. No edits. We're just going to do this. Anyway, Grunt Truck, where I left off Grunt Truck. If you're catching this video from now, you better go check out part one of this. This isn't going to make any sense at all. Anyway, so we got through Grunt Truck there. It was just heavy, dirty, nasty. I loved it. Um, coming along with Grunt Truck, I was able to find these guys, My Sister's Machine, another long-haired band. Just that same type of sound. Just that borderline heavy metal, uh, just hard rock. But really, the best way to describe it is grunge. You know, I, I know a lot of these bands didn't like that term, and a lot of the people up in Seattle didn't like that term. But it was, I mean, that's what it was, man. It was grunge. Um, Pearl Jam went ahead and did this masterpiece as well, which was darn near as good as their first album. Can't take anything away from them. I went, uh, you know, found these dudes from Australia, which were, you know, a little bit different uh, from the rest of these guys. They were, they were also dirty and heavy. Just had that grit in the guitar sound. A um, little three-piece band. Uh, they, you know, I mean, just, but the whole album all the way through was just awesome. It was just, you know, it was grungy. It was just a dirty sound, and it was just loud. And um, anyway, I watched that movie, Singles. Somebody said, you know, you like that Seattle stuff. You got to check out Singles. I'm like, all right. So it's like this romantic, it's like this love story. It's, you know, whatever. It's coffee shops and friggin' bicycles and whatever but i watched it and, and i'm like dude the scenes where alice in chains is up on stage or they're in the club dancing and you can hear pearl jam or you can hear mother love bone in the background of the of the movie i'm like dude not only was the movie awesome and not only was you know cliff a god because he's got janet you know beating down his door and ringing his phone off the hook what guy back then didn't want that i mean we were all trying for that right that never happened. Cliff was like our hero, you know. <laughs> we love that dude. And, 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 you know, Campbell Scott and Kira Sedgwick, their relationship, that on and off thing. I, it, it was gold. You know, it's it's looked at now like some, you know, cult classic or whatever. And that's about as high a status as it ever reached. But to me, that movie was pure gold. I love that thing. Anyway, from the soundtrack, I bought the soundtrack because of the cool Pearl Jam songs on there and Soundgarden and stuff. Uh, and and came across these guys. I'm like, dude, that's another one. You know, they're nowhere near as heavy as like an Alice in Chains or whatever, or a Grunt Truck, or. But uh, they had that feeling. They had that that just that soul, that power, and and uh, it really fit in well. They meshed well with the rest of these bands. Um, they knew what they were doing. They played their instruments well. Um, you know, I was able to. Um, listen to this radio station we used to have around here it was called x96 and it's still here but it's a it's a junk uh you know like a i don't know what it's like an indie station now almost they play a lot of emo and a lot of you know fake folk acoustic you know guys it, it sounds terrible now i'm sorry it just does but it used to play alternative rock you know a lot of 90s alternative rock and then on sunday nights at midnight to one they had the loud show and the loud show is where you got to hear these bands, mostly these Seattle-type bands, Pacific Northwest, over into Idaho, uh, Washington, you know, Portland area bands that didn't get radio play anywhere else, and it was awesome because you would you would come across bands like this, like Tad. I mean, come on. Uh, who's this 300-pound dude just wailing into the microphone and just beating that guitar to death and, and answering the phone? Coincidentally enough, on uh, singles, when uh, Janet is trying to get a hold of Cliff and she accidentally dials the wrong number and starts talking all dirty to this dude. That's Tad Doyle from Tad. It was awesome. Great scene. I loved it. Anyway, Tad, heavy again. They had a couple of good albums back then. Um, kind of faded. You know, from what I understand, they're still together, but they faded away. Um, I kept watching MTV, you know weeding through all the rap videos that I couldn't stand watching and all the pop videos, you know, the, the, what, whoever was out back then, I don't know, the B-52s, the Mariah Carey, I couldn't stand that stuff, where's the guitars, you know, all of a sudden sex type thing pops up on the radio from Core, <laughs> like, dude, rest in peace, Scott Weiland, by the way, you know, you were missed, uh, don't do drugs, kids, ha, <laughs> anyway, Got to see STP in concert back in the day, and it blew me away. I loved it. Got to see Wyland again with Velvet Revolver. It was awesome. Um, 
those DeLeo brothers uh, from STP, uh, bass and guitar. It was uh, Dean and, uh, oh man, Eric Kretz on drums. I can't remember Dean's brother's name. But anyway, they're from Jersey, you know, so they were kind of hometown boys for me. I liked that. And um, anyway, uh, you know, just check it out, guys. I mean, if you don't know this stuff, I mean, obviously there's a lot of grunge purists out there that either they all they know all of what I'm talking about right now or they think I'm a complete idiot because I'm not talking more about Green River and the U-Men and Willard and all that stuff. And um, anyway, I uh, also was able to find this, which, uh, you know, if you don't know, it's the collaboration between, you know, Soundgarden and Pearl Jam because uh, Andy Wood, the lead singer from Malfunction, and um, Mother Love Bone, when he passed away, Chris Cornell was a roommate of his, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, he's the lead singer. Um, he, uh, they were roommates, and Chris started writing some songs, and decided he was going to do an album as a tribute to his buddy. So it came out, you know, he, uh, he, he grabbed up a Soundgarden's drummer at the time, Matt Cameron. He's back with Soundgarden now, but since 2002, he's also been playing with Pearl Jam. Now he's pulling double duty. Um, at the time, he was in Soundgarden, um, and they got Mike McCready, uh, Stone Gossard, and Jeff Ament from, from Pearl Jam, put together this super band. It was awesome. It was, you know, it was powerful. And um, you know, I'm telling you, man, they turned diamonds back into coal. They were so powerful. And uh, did this album. You know, there's an 11-minute song on there called Reach Down with McCready's guitar solo wailing all over it. It's beautiful. It's an awesome song. And uh, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam came and did a duet on one song. He throws in some background vocals on there, too. But it's really, it's the wailing of Chris Cornell that really throws that album over the top. The guy is a genius. And um, anyway, so there was that. And then I mentioned this a little bit earlier here. I was able to find these guys, Willard. From what I can tell, they've only released one full-length album. And uh, they're probably, you know, gone into oblivion now, you know, uh, retired, doing whatever it is they're doing. They're not around anymore. But that one was some heavy stuff. I mean, I know a lot of guys who listen to, like, Godsmack these days and stuff like that. This was the front runner. You know, I swear Sully from Godsmack listened to Willard, uh, you know, on repeat to grab that sound. I mean, and these guys, you know, I mean, this was early 90s we're talking about. Just that crunch and the drive that they had. But uh, anyway, um, you know, that's how I got into the whole grunge scene and, and, you know, I mean, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you can call it, uh, you know, punk metal or, or uh, you know, Seattle heavy metal, whatever it is you want to call it. I mean, the guys were from all over the place. They weren't only from Seattle. And uh, to me, that's what it is. It's grunge. And, and, and I'm not taking anything away from, uh, from the founders, you know. I'm not, the Melvins, you know. I mean, they had some of this kind of stuff, too, where it was just heavy, uh, crunchy guitars and that stuff, and, um, you know, like I said, the U-Men, uh, L7, that sort of stuff, not taking anything away, I mean, these guys were pioneers, they were all pioneers, Paw, I don't think released an album until 93, but they were around back then, too, um, you know, really started with Sub Pop Records all the way back in the 80s, uh, but this is when it started to get popular, and since I was still stuck on the long-haired, screaming metal stuff back then, this is how I was able to find this stuff, and yeah, I've gone back, and I've listened to all that other stuff, and it's great now, I love it now, um, you know, there's not a better period of music in my life, and I was, I'm kidding, I was raised on classic rock, I was raised on Clapton and the Eagles, and, uh, you know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, I'm, I'm a sucker for talent, but uh, as far as just listenability and music that I can just throw on and just listen to uh, anytime, no matter what mood I'm in, this 90s music and this grunge especially, the heavy 90s music, that's just it. That's where it's at. Anyway, do yourselves a favor, though. You know, check out singles if you haven't watched it. I mean, you might hate that scene. You really might hate that scene. But there's something in that movie that's going to touch a nerve. Um, it's a, it's an ensemble cast. It really is. And some of these guys were in their youth or in their prime at this time. And you just don't hear about them being in that movie, which is a darn shame. It really is. Um, anyway, uh, that's how I got into it all. I'm going to throw out a mention here because you can't talk about this stuff without talking about Dirt. Alice in Chains, man. What a terrific album that was all the way through start to finish. It was uh, it was so moody and emotional, and you know Cantrell's just slow chugging guitar riffs. It's just it's a thing of beauty. It really is. I mean, he is pure talent, Jerry Cantrell. Don't take anything away from Lane Staley. The dude was an amazing vocalist. Um, 
he's not everybody's style or type. That doesn't matter. I mean, the dude was amazing at what he did. He honed his craft. I mean, he was just amazing. But Cantrell owned that band. And Sean Kinney, the drummer, I mean, those guys were the heart and soul of that band. And they still are today. The band is still kicking. Um, and still releasing stuff that sounds like a mix between Alice in Chains' self-titled album, their last studio album before Lane died, and Cantrell's solo stuff where he was doing the vocals. I mean, that's what it sounds like now, and it's awesome. Um, also, in that, you know, you've got bands like uh, Helmet, which were a little bit heavier than some, but again, it's got that same type of sound to it, that same rattiness, um, just that same blistering guitar work. The vocals sort of change back and forth on that helmet, uh, you know, kind of going from clean to uh, gravelly. It's uh, it's interesting to hear. Um, anyway, that's that's how I get into all of this stuff. Look at there's, there's this dude in the pickup truck just coming up creeping here. Just like, what's this guy doing? Can't you see I'm vlogging here, man? Anyway, Seattle, grunge, the music scene from the 90s, early 90s. I loved it, uh, and that's how I got into it. it. It stemmed from the whole love of hair metal, and then when I saw that Pearl Jam video on MTV, I knew that I had something that I could listen to again. Uh, and and surely enough, now I look back on that stuff I would listen to in the 80s, and it's just not.